Let's talk about lamb and cooking lamb just right. Lamb is one of those things this time of year, springtime, Easter time, lamb is bang in season and just tastes right, particularly over the Easter weekend. You'll find offers on lamb around this time of the year because supermarkets know you want it. But some people can be a little bit scared of lamb. It's a strange one to cook and because Generally, it's quite expensive. It doesn't get cooked quite as often. So I'm going to give you a method for cooking lamb that works every single time. It's not actually the cooking that's important here. It's the brining. I'm a big fan of brining meats before roasting and cooking. It's great with chicken, makes it absolutely foolproof, but it works with dark meats like lamb as well. With brining, you've just got to get the balance right. Once you've got the salt content done, you can kind of add other flavors as you see fit, but the brining will start to impart flavors and in a sense, start to cook it before you start cooking it, if that makes sense. So brine, a salt water solution, is a great way to get things started and make things seasoned perfectly throughout and make sure that you're ending up with a flavoursome, tasty, juicy meat at the end. Why should you use a brine? I think it make, cuts out a lot of these basic stages and makes life a lot easier for you. All you really need is, in this case, a 5% brine, in other words, 5% of the water is salt by weight. You can add other things if you need to. You should steer clear of acids unless you're going for something particular like limes, lemons, vinegars. There is a thing you can do with that, but that's not what this recipe is about. You can add great woody herbs, bay, thyme, rosemary. You can add peppercorns, other herbs, spices, garlic, onions, all these things to brine and they all have their own delicate little flavor. There is actually some debate over whether some flavor particles are too big to pass through a brine, but I like it, makes me happy, and generally speaking, we're talking about things that don't cost very much. So let's get started with brining our lamb. So I've got a leg of lamb here, but if you've got a shoulder or a half shoulder, this works exactly the same. Obviously the only difference you're gonna find is carving the meat at the end. This is about a 1.2 kilo joint of lamb, leg of lamb here and you can see it's got the bone running through the middle lamb with bone in is it absolutely packed with flavor because that bone is just going to leach out lovely meat juices as it cooks i'm just going to create my brine first of all i'm going to put my bowl on scales add water till there'll be just about enough i'm not putting the lamb in just yet i'll do all my weighing but i'm going to make sure i've got a bowl big enough to cope with it and the water once you've got your water measurement, then you can find out how much salt you need. Uh, if you're not a fond of working with percentages, then consult your nearest digital assistant, Alexa, Google, Siri, whoever, and just shout, what's 5% of whatever my water weighs? And then get ordinary table salt. Don't use your fancy Malden salt. Don't use your fancy pink Himalayan, your boring table salt. Pour this in and weigh that out. And now it's up to you. I'm adding some peppercorns here, a little bit of bay. I really wanted to add some rosemary and a few chunks of carrot. And that's just going to give us a small bit of sweetness and earthiness to the whole brine. These brine flavours are going to penetrate the meat, but the salt will do the legwork, no pun intended. Give everything a good stir so the salt's dissolved. Pop your lamb in, cover and leave for at least 12 hours for this size leg of lamb. Anything from 12 to 24 hours is really good. There's a lot of leeway in this. Perhaps not two days, but 24 hours is a good rule of thumb. We're gonna remove it from the brine, discard that brine, that's no good for anything now. Um, pat the lamb all over and preheat your oven to pretty hot, probably as hot as it'll go, 240, 250 centigrade. That's what, 450 Fahrenheit, something like that. Get it as hot as you can. And now I'm gonna make a trivet, that is some things on the base of my baking tray. I've got a couple of halved carrots, a couple of halved onions there, and they're just gonna stop the lamb from sticking to the base of the tray. One negative of brining is you probably won't be able to use the, the scrapings, the fond on the bottom of the pan for uh, making a gravy because it's just a bit too salty, a bit too strong. You might get away with it, but it'll probably be too salty um, unless you're very lucky. But this trivet on the bottom of onions and carrots, any old manky root veg is just going to stop it burning on the bottom and 
as a cook, I tend to have that carrot as a little snack while I'm doing everything else once it's cooked. So you're going to pop that lamb in there at that very high heat and leave it in there for about 20 minutes, then turn the heat down to about 150. That initial scorching is just going to start colouring the surface of the lamb and get everything moving. Then we're just turning down to that low temperature, about 150 centigrade, and that's just going to keep it cooking throughout. This will now take about two to three hours. Ideally, you'll have a meat thermometer. I'll put links to some of my favourites down below. This is a, a Ponzi Thermapen one, which is probably the best you can get, but um, there are much cheaper models that do exactly the same job. I would thoroughly recommend them. Test it until it's about 65 degrees C for a nice medium for most people. You can adjust that as you see fit. Once you've hit 65 degrees C, pull it out of the oven, transfer it to a board and cover with foil. You want to leave it at least half an hour, ideally leave it an hour to rest. Don't worry, don't panic about it getting cold. Even if it get, it'll still be pretty warm until the point where you start to carve it and that also when it will start to lose heat. But allow it to rest. If you carve things straight away, all the juice just pours out of it. If you leave it a little while, that makes life a lot easier and trust me, a lot more tasty and a lot more tender. And then when you're ready with your lamb, you can start to carve. When you've got a lamb on the leg like this, you carve around the bone and then pull off slices that way. Or you can do a vertical slice and carry on. have it your roast lamb with no difficulty at all by brining it and I trust me this is the perfect way to do it serve it with all your favorite roast accompaniments like roast potatoes carrots gravy peas Yorkshire's whatever you fancy a lot of people like having mint sauce on there it also makes great leftovers the next day I minced mine up and popped it in with some tinned tomatoes and other veg and made a shepherd's pie but there's loads of things you can do with leftover lamb I hope you enjoyed that recipe. Please hit like if you did, and if you could hit subscribe, I'd be enormously grateful. All of your support really, really helps. If you want to consider becoming a member of this channel, hit the join button below and find out how you can support me even further. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.